Hello, everyone, and welcome to part three of the second episode of Mysteries of Ravensburg Academy. This is a gothic horror miniseries, so please be aware of that. Um, things like violence, blood, gore, um, the body horror, those sorts of things. So if any of those come up to align for you, please take a break. Your support means a lot to us, but so does your mental health. So the last time we left off the party, they were... Um, in Ismelda Thalassa's office as one of the notable characters was shot by a mysterious archer. They decided afterwards to go on uh, an investigation spree after the campus was put on lockdown. They found out quite a bit of information on the Fae as well as other things like moon gates and magical artifacts from the valley. They confronted Logan Zilch about his involvement in Tiberius's disappearance, as well as speaking to one of Tiberius's best friends, B. Morta, who was in the nurse's station after beating up one of the suspects that are, I guess, still currently on the list. After that conversation, they then decided that they were going to go to the greenhouse. And that is where we left off. As far as I'm aware, you all have decided to go to the greenhouse. Correct. Correct. All right. So yeah, you all make your way to the greenhouse along the cobblestone streets. It is definitely getting late. Um, you spent a bit of time in the nurse's station, so I'm probably going to say this is about 7 or 8 o'clock at night as you all are walking up to um, the greenhouse. The greenhouses are silent. There is mm -hmm. nothing going on here. There are no students no people, just the rows upon rows upon rows of glass structures. Some of them taller than others, but the cul-de-sac is quiet. And uh, all the um, greenhouses, are they um, dark? Why not them lit? Yes, all of the greenhouses are dark. So, so I mean, but we want to start in nineteen because that's where we found. That's where I found the crumpled up. You know, that's the abandoned one. The one I agree. most likely that I would hide something that I wouldn't want somebody finding. Yeah, and that's where we found the dead face. So we should go to nineteen. Mm -hmm. And last time it was locked. Um, I'd like to check the door though. Maybe the door is still locked. It is chained and padlocked shut. Okay. Okay. And so I, I were you, did you were you able to fit in last time? To I was back? able to reach a hand in, but I wasn't able to reach my whole body in. But we could break, you know, it's all glass, so we could break it more and then get in that way. Or we can try to break this lock. But I I would assume that the broken window in the back would serve better for us. Might just okay, be... yeah. Let's go with your uh, gut. We want to walk around the back. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, first off, see if any anything or is in it before we're like jumping in, I'd say, right? Yeah, Looking so make, a, make me a perception check. Okay, perception. Okay, me too. Mm. Five, what did you get, Goliath? Eight. Eight. And Adam? Five. Wah, wah, oh. wah. You don't see anything other than what you've seen or the plant in the corner that kind of looks like it's still shifting around and moving. As you know, this was... This is near a lot of the greenhouses that have carnivorous plants, um, as you found out, especially because Lou worked with carnivorous plants. Um, lots of pots, lots of dirt, lots of, you know, smaller plants around there, but nothing else. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's what um, you okay. see. Well, I don't care anyways, and I want to go in. Yeah, so. it seems safe. Can't see anything. Yeah. Let's All do right. it. So, so uh, yeah. Strength do you check. Do the honors. Oops. 
Sorry, I just had a bug attack my face with the okay. Um, strength time. <laughs> I could do it if you'd like. No, Let's see what I we got got a, I got twenty. Yeah, you bust the panel out. I will say this section is it would be a, a little bit of a squeeze for you to get through because you're just so big and bulky being a, a, a gargoyle, but you can manage to squeeze your way through this, this panel. It's not going to be the easiest of escapes if you need to get out quick, but you can fit through it. Okay. So yeah, so you are, you are now in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you see anything? I ask. Um, I... Say yeah, I I want to look around, so I want to do an investigation. Mm -hmm. I guess right. Yep. I got a seven. Oh, there's a lot of pots, a lot of pots with a lot of plants that are definitely dead. Brown twigs sticking out of the dirt with brown leaves hanging limply from them. There is not a single green thing in this entire greenhouse. Can I can I do another investigation check and not be so broad about it? Is there something that you would specifically like to look for? Yeah, any any por portion in the floor that a floor or pot that would look like it was fresh dirt. It was like freshly like dug up because I'm assuming right. if you know things have been sitting around all the dirt in the pots would be pretty you know old and set. dry yeah either dry yeah. or set you know uh yeah give me an investigation check okay. Okay, I got 16 all right there does not seem to be any the freshest dirt that there is is a bag of potting soil that was recently ripped open that had spilled on the floor. It looks like there was some dirt that was taken out of it, but it doesn't seem to have been put in any of the pots that are in this greenhouse. Okay. Should I come in? Uh, yeah, you should come in, see if you can help me. Okay. I don't have to do anything to uh I can fit in, right? No, yeah. you're you're kind of narrower than Goliath is, so you manage to get in. It it is still a bit of a it's a small panel, so you have to like crouch and you know, get in, but you can. Okay. Yeah. Um I do I pace around the room looking for any um uh, one footed uh marks and i will uh, say you do not see any one-footed tracks anywhere but i, uh, I do notice, you know that there's a bag of new soil but i i don't really see any like pots are there do you see any plants around that might you know look a bit newer than the rest of the plants or plants that don't belong in here this one is empty though isn't it this is the unused Yes, there there are still plants in here, but they're all dead. Okay. Um, what else can we do? I mean, um, Lou had two other greenhouses that he frequented. Uh, he could hide it among regular plants, couldn't he? Yeah, but there's there's no regular plants in here. I know, but there was yeah, yeah, in one of his other houses. two yeah. greenhouses. What are your passive 17. perceptions, just to ask? Hmm. Um, my passive perception is... Where would I see this? Uh, ooh, okay. good question. Oh, my, mine is 12. It's on the left-hand side of your senses on your main page. There's a... Yeah, perception, investigation, and insight. Oh, here you we go. It? Yeah. So, um, thirteen. Okay, so I'm gonna say you, Adam, 
through the glass of the, it is a frosted glass just because of all of the pollen and stuff that's gotten on it and no one's cleaned it. You see a small shadow, probably two and a half feet tall, maybe, dart by on one of the long sides from the back to the front. Mm -hmm. You see that? I point at it. It's yeah, gone by the time you look at it. No, but it just wait, what are you talking about? Okay, I swear there's something over there. Um, I go over to where it was uh, running to. It seems to be the front yeah. of yeah. the greenhouse. Can I and see anything? You Any tracks? do. No, it wasn't on the inside. It was on the outside. Um, mm -hmm. You on do. The other side of the glass. Yes. Um, you saw the shadow through the glass. Um, you do hear something that sounds like something tugging on the, the chain that's holding the front door shut. Yeah. Okay. I um, whisper, yell to Goliath, like, hey, hey, you hurry out back. Go around. Okay. Oh, okay. Why do you see something? Just do it. Hurry. Okay, okay. So I'm going to leave mm -hmm. and go around the front and see if I can see anything, but without being very, um, you know, I just want to peek my head around the corner and see if I see anything at the front door. All right. Would you like to make a stealth check? No, but I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> I got a 12. All right. So you squeeze out the back and you tiptoe around to the front. And as you get to the front and kind of peek your head around, what's tugging on the chains is a little wooden doll that looks almost identical to one of the dolls that Constance had sticking out of her bag. You recognize it nearly instantly these creepy wooden puppet. And it actually stops tugging on the chain for a moment and turns, <laughs> looking you directly in the face. It has a very wide, creepy smile as it stares at you. And then it laughs. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Adam. No, not Adam. Sorry. Goliath. Adam, you do hear the, the giggling from inside the greenhouse. Yeah. But Goliath is the one that needs to make the saving throw. My wisdom is going to be at the top, right? The yes, it's under here. It's under saving throws. Okay. Okay. And that's just the twenty sided die, right? Yes. I got a twenty. 22. All right. That's so this thing, as it giggles at you, you feel the stone in your body begin to lock up as this fear response kicks in, but you manage to shake it off. However, this thing runs towards you. It doesn't run very far, but it runs towards you and begins to tug on you, and it's going to make an attack roll as it uses its grabby hands. It probably doesn't get you because it got an eight. Okay, cool. We love that. So oh, but that's super creepy. I do. Uh, cool. Can I sense any of this from inside? You can hear the giggling, and you eventually catch the shadow, and it moves to the corner. And as this doll, as this wooden doll is like grabbing at you, you're batting its hands away very easily, but it's still giggling as it's just grabbing at you. And at this point, I would like everybody to roll initiative. Mm hmm. It didn't do too hot. I'm at nine. Nine for Adam. Where where is it? So that's gonna be um your D20 plus your dex. It there should be an initiative box, oh, okay. but to, that shows yeah. your bonus, but it's your it's your dexterity bonus. I don't know how your app works. You're using the app, right? I'm on the com on the computer. Yeah, if you sort of you can press the number. 
and then it makes a role for you that sort of does everything for you. It's pretty clever. Okay. I, we're not Yeah, sponsored, no, are we? But uh, but it is pretty clever. I, I got a I got a three. A three. Well, oh, wow. You all are not rolling very high, but luckily that means Adam, you are actually going first. Okay. You are inside I would like the greenhouse. to, yeah, I would like to jump through one of the windows. All right. Um, give me, I, I will say, yeah, give me a strength check. Yep. And I will say this will use half of your movement speed. Okay. Uh, there we go. 25. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thank Goliath, you. behind you, you hear the glass just shatter as you watch as Adam does a full-on tumble out of the window and pops back up. You have your action and your bonus action and whatever half of your movement speed is, I think, 15. Um, I'm going That's to say enough that to you reach are, the doll. yeah, I'm going to say you are right behind Goliath, but you would have to go around Goliath to get to the doll. Okay. I'd like to uh, try and go and grab the doll. All right, so that's going to be an attack roll, a melee weapon attack roll. Are you're just grabbing it with your bare hands? Yeah, I want to like, I will yeah, say you hold. do have your weapons with you. Um, Mm hmm just the the school is open carry. Um, so you are grabbing the doll with your bare hands. So it's going to be an unarmed strike. Um, strength first, and then, I mean, I'm not Proficiency. striking per se, I'm trying to restrict. Well, this is to see if you can even grab it. You are Yeah. proficient in unarmed strikes, so it's going to be your strength plus your proficiency modifier on the d20 roll. Yes, there we go. Which is then a 16. Yeah, you grab onto this doll, and I'm going to need you to make a strength check, and I'm also going to make one because it's... trying to break the grapple. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Well, that wasn't too hot. That adds up to 12. It got a 16 down from a natural 20 Mm -hmm. and it yanks its arm out of your, of your Oh, grasp. damn it. Yeah. And I believe you have, you do have multi-attack if you want to hit it with something or grab it again. I believe you have multi-attack. Okay, I'll try to, I guess as it comes down, naturally, I'd want to try to kick it. Yep, that'll be another That's unarmed kind of gross, strike. like, because it's, I mean, I'm a big, tall uh, Yes. monster thing, right? So, Mm. unarmed strike, kick it. So Mm that's, hmm again, just strength. Yes. Um, there we go. That is a, a, a 20, a natural 20. Natural 20 Which or unnatural? adds up to uh, natural. Okay, so you rolled a 20 on the die. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, so that is going to be double damage because unarmed Mm strikes hmm are your strength modifier. Um, so what is twice your strength modifier? That's why my strength modifier would be 14. The the little number, not the not the big number, like just the modifier, not proficiency. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. Um, so twice of that would be eight. Okay, that that sounds more like it. All right. Yeah. So yeah, you just kick this thing, and it is definitely a solid wood doll, um, Mm -hmm. a solid wood puppet, and you give it a good kick, and there's a crack as it uh, takes damage. So next up, unless you have a bonus action you want to do, next up is going to be Goliath. Yeah, no, I'm 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 good. All right. So we're <clears throat> we're trying to destroy this thing, or are we just trying to? I don't know, man. I'm creeped out. Is it Creepy doll. is the is the doll humanoid or a creature? It is humanoid in shape. If you're looking for a specific typing, it's going to be construct. 
Um, okay. Because I was going to do try to uh, whole person spell, but it says to the humanoid. Yes, so, so that is a specific type of okay. creature. Um, so it is it is humanoid in shape, but it is a construct. So a whole person wouldn't work on it. That is fine with me. Um, so I want to do... Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ba, 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 ba. I want to attack it with my trident but, all right but i'm wondering can i do can i do it can i cast a spell and then attack or does the the spell take my the attack? spell takes an action unless it states that the spell takes a bonus action which it should say one ba next to the spell if yeah. it does then you can otherwise it takes an action it would it's probably one a or just a I forget what the okay. typing is, um, but that would mean that it would take your action, and your attack action takes an action. And can I can I do my bonus action first? Yes, you may. Okay, so I want to cast Thunder Smite, which is a yes. bonus action. Yes, it most certainly is. Yes. So yep, you cast Thunder Smite on your trident. What is what does that look like when Goliath casts a spell like that? So. I'm just going to pull out my trident and kind of focus on it. And there's going to be like an electrical veil that starts to creep up from my hand and engulf my trident. Awesome. And, and some kind of cackling, like electrical, you know, sounds and, you know, lights flickering, things like that. Awesome. So now you can use your attack action. I believe... I believe both of you at sixth level have multi-attack, which means you can attack twice. Um, I will say the spell Thunder Smite will end once you hit the creature. So if you hit on the first time and the second time, you'll only get the Thunder Smite damage once. Okay. Because the spell will then end. So yeah, I would like to attack it. Yes. And and what is that? What kind of it is going to be a melee weapon attack, so it'll be strength plus your proficiency modifier plus your um, d20 roll. Because okay. you're proficient in tridents, I believe. Yes. So d20, I got a 17. And then my strength is plus 2, and the little number under is 15. So you would add two and then your proficiency modifier I believe is a plus three at sixth level it should okay. say i think yeah, in your in your actions it should also if you've equipped your trident it'll show you all the damage stuff you can sort of um i don't know if you have the same interface as i do if you sort of just press the number next to your the thing you're attacking with it'll do the roll for you There's the roll okay and do all the math if if you've equipped it, um, I believe. Um, it is equipped, but I already rolled that twenty, so I kind of want to keep that twenty. And then the it says plus five on that hit. So that means you would add five to the total. So that is both your okay. strength and, you know, so you would add d twenty plus five. Okay, so twenty five. So was that a natural twenty that you rolled? No, sorry, it's 17. 17. 17. So it would be plus 17 five. plus 5, yeah. whatever that 22. is, so 22. Yeah, so that is that is definitely enough to hit the doll. Uh, this thing is okay. not hard to hit, and it doesn't dodge. So uh, I'll take damage on that. So it would set off your thunderous smite, and it would do the regular damage. Okay. Um, is it... How strong is this doll? Is this doll done, or...? You'll have to roll damage to see because it's it's it has hit points. Okay. So you'll have to roll damage to know how many hit points you take away from it. Okay, and that's a twenty again. No, it's going to be the damage the damage die. So you see right oh, next to the I trident, it I has to to yeah. And then don't yeah. forget you have thunderous smite on it that's going to go off. So whatever the thunderous smite is damage smite damage is, you'll have to add that as well. Okay, so it says 
1d6 plus 2. Yes, so you would roll a d6 and then add 2 to that number. And okay. then make sure you check how much damage Thunderous Smite does. So I did 5 plus 2 is 7, and Thunderous Smite is... Um, it says 2d6. So you would roll two additional d6, add those together, and it does thunder damage, correct? Um, I think so. Sorry. Uh, it doesn't say. Thunder it smite say, should say. It just says, um, your weapon rings with thunder that is audible from 300 feet of you. In the attack, yeah, thunder damage, sorry. 2d6 All thunder right. damage. Yep. So we rolled your weapon damage, now we'll roll your thunder damage. So that's just a so, flat 2d6. And just one of them, or two? 2d6. 2D, right? 2D, yeah, okay. 2d6, but you're not adding any modifiers to it. Magic doesn't really take modifiers. Okay, so both of my dice together is five. And then I got a five on the other one. All right, so, so you did 10 points of damage in total. Um, give me one second. Um, action, try again. And then plus five, right? Yeah, so you had the plus five from your thunder and the plus yeah. five from your weapon damage. And then I, and then, and then I, and then I rolled a five. Wait, did... that was the same thing, right? I rolled the d6 and that was five, Uh huh. right? Yes. And then next to the trident, the the hit and DC is five. Oh, no, it's, That's... I'm so sorry. It's plus two. It's five plus two plus five. So it's 12 because there's two piercing. Okay, it. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So that is the first attack. So your thunderous smite is no longer on your trident as it is successfully okay. thundered. Um, but you do have a second attack, I believe. So if you would like to attack it a second time. Uh, I will attack it a second time. D6. D20. You're rolling to hit again. Rolling to hit, and then, okay. Yeah, so, and if you hit, then you'll do the damage. So I got a... I rolled my die, my dice, and I got 12. All right, yeah. And then... And then you add proficiency stuff too, right? Because you're good at using the trident. Yes, so yeah, yep, so that, that hits the doll. So roll damage. You're only going to be rolling your trident damage. So that'll okay. be 1d6 plus 2. I got 5. All right. So as you slam this trident into this doll, you are taking bits of wood off of it. It is looking very shabby, but it is still up as it's going to take its turn. And since you've damaged it the most, it's going to try and use its grabby hands against you. Really and gross. you once again bat its hands away as it tries grabbing you while cackling. Um, I'm also going to roll to see if it gets its cackle back. It does not. So that is the end of its turn. However, you do see magic begin to sort of glow through it with this dark purple energy as some of the wood pieces knit back together. And it is back up to the top with Adam. Okay. Talking is a free action, right? I've heard people say that before about... Yes, to a degree. Um, if yep. if it goes on too long and I deem you were just filibustering your turn, I will go, nope, that's the end of your turn. Boom. Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask the doll who who sent you. Um, it does not respond. It simply cackles. Okay. It seems this thing cannot speak. That is gross. I will try to attack it with my... Uh, I, I take out my rapier, which mm -hmm. is what we use in fencing class. Yes. So I'm very good with it. Mm -hmm. And I try to hit it. So I do this, which is uh, adds up to 18. 
That hits. Roll damage. Uh-huh. Here we go. That adds up to 12. And that is enough as your rapier strikes out, you slice the twine that is holding its head and its body together, and it snaps, and the puppet collapses to the ground. And you are no longer in combat. However, you do hear something running up the path. Away from us or towards Towards us? you. Um, as okay. you turn, yes, it is... You actually recognize this person. Um, you didn't really think too much of it because you were just passing by. But within the group of nurses, there was one that was also a werewolf. Big, shaggy hair, curly hair. Um, kind of average looking, but kind of an athletic build as she is running up the path towards you and kind of skids to a stop. What happened here? We were attacked. See this creep? I we point with my sword. I knew she was up to no good. She? she? Who are you talking about? Constance. She yeah, makes thought, those puppets. I thought that the puppet was familiar. I just couldn't, I just couldn't place it. And we just talked to her yesterday, too, or earlier today. Yes. So I've heard she mentioned people talking to her. And then she... What did you She was just her? acting... She's my roommate. She's uh -huh. been acting strange all week. I thought it was just, you know, something to do with something that happened over spring break, which I, I guess it did. Um... But she was just acting so strange. And then when I saw one of her puppets leave the house on its own after she left with a suspicious amount of stuff, I followed it. And the, the doll alone? So where is she? She left before then. And then the doll left the house after her. And I followed mm -hmm. it here. Do, do you know how the dolls work? Can the doll hear what we're saying now? Not really. I, I mean, she'd use them to like do household chores, like sweep up after her, things like that. She has a minor in puppetry. She's already gotten it, and she's just focusing on historical preservation at the moment. But it, it just so seems... If it's only a minor and, you know, she it's a puppet, so she has to be somewhat in the vicinity, right, to control it. Does she have to be close or can she control them? Do you know? Do you know she can it? give them commands and they can go pretty far as long as they're following whatever command it is. She does need to be near them to verbally command them. But if she says, hey, go to the coffee shop and get me a coffee, they'll they'll do it. And she doesn't have to be close to them they could be miles away and as long as she's given them a command they'll carry it out that sort of reminds me about uh, why we're here uh in a way like tiberius our roommate would do the same thing if you told him to do anything he'd do it he's not a puppet but in a way people treated him like one um i'm glad to see you care about your roommate too did, yeah did you hear um... about tiberius yeah, he worked with Constance. What's your name, by the way? Oh, I, I'm sorry. A lot's been happening lately. Uh, I'm Mandragora. I, I work as a nurse at the, the nursing station. Um, I, my major is nursing, and I have a minor in herbology. Um, so sometimes I come here to work on things, but that's been rare lately. Um, so why, why would she send a doll here? I'm still trying to figure that out. Why is she sending a doll here? And why after you? Well, obviously we're getting close to something. We've been searching for this 
this flute that Tiberius was looking into, actually their, you know, their group or some two of them in the group that they would work with were looking in this flute, into this flute, Tiberius being one of them. And I think that this whole this whole him being dead and his friend um Lou being dead, I think it all has to do with this flute and you know, I think that there's something here because why else, you know, would she try and be trying to cover up whatever's here? Why would she try to attack us here if we weren't close to anything? Right. So, is Have the you, flute you missing? Anything? Yeah, we haven't been able to find it. But we thought that, you know, he, he, he hid it somewhere around this area were there any were there any hints on what where he might have hit it yeah somewhere that has to do with dirt he was looking for a for a trough or a a trowel a trowel yeah he was looking for a trowel so i mean it came to our conclusion that you know i had to do something with dirt in this in this greenhouse, we you know we were looking in before we were attacked by this doll. Like we noticed that there was a new bag of dirt, so we thought that maybe, maybe not in this greenhouse, but in one of the other two that they frequented, they they hid it. Interesting. Um, all right. So, I mean, how how do you feel about Constance? I mean, she was, she was a little like, weird. She was a little quirky. She liked puppets, admittedly a little too much. Uh, but she didn't seem like she was a killer. No, no, I was saying that. Why are you jumping to conclusions on killer? Well, you mentioned two students being dead I, I and her in association. So I, I assumed it was something like that. But like... Okay, yeah. Where, she where, was just like, a little weird. You know your way around here, don't you? Relatively. There, you know, there's... Well, if you want to hide something, you don't really want to put it in any of the greenhouse beds. No? Because people dig up those things all the time, and... They, like, plants get root-bound, and you have to repot them, or, you know, they have to have clippings taken of them, or, you know, you have to dig to put certain fertilizers in, or you know, other things like that. And and so people are digging around in flower beds all the time around here. You you wouldn't hide it there. And I mean, the only other thing filled with dirt is the fountain, but like, why would you hide it in? Why wouldn't you? The fountain? Why would there be dirt in the fountain? Well, there's always been dirt in this fountain. It's barely ever been used. Builders would put the bags of dirt on the side of the fountain and eventually it filled up and clogged the pipes with mud and no one decided to fix it so it just built up more dirt as leaves blew into it and other things like that so it's always been filled with dirt hmm, that's i mean that's weird interesting but weird but i mean that's the place that we hadn't thought about looking but it seems a little bit or like you know People wouldn't usually go there, so it might be a good place to hide something. You said you were... What was your passive perception again? My passive perception? I think yours was like, what, 11? Passive perception is 12. 12. And Adam... And mine, passive perception, 13. You notice... You, you've seen this fountain before. I believe I described it in the very, very first episode when you first met Lou Kelp. It's an it's basically an urn on a pedestal. And you look at the top of this urn, and at the top is a fish. And then you remember the words written at the bottom, and the word Circle. fish was circled. Right. And and I remember this with my big big lack of a brain. <laughs> You're pursuing so, things with other things. There, um, I know you could, could 
you guys good at climbing? It's actually, it's a very low fountain. Like you can literally oh, okay. sit on the edge of it. <laughs> it. It's, it's not like a giant, like, you know, I'm I'm currently as you can see tonight heads. outside. I'm I'm in Europe where we have our fountains are like basically not skyscrapers but like house sized some of them. So yeah, <laughs> it's um, not anything like that. It's it's okay. a tiny like single a spout fountain. There. Yeah, it's it's basically a glorified bird bath that's sitting on the ground. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> basically, <Just> to... <laughs> yeah. The the fountains that are like that are in the student village. Um, and you would you would remember as you look through the other words, just kind of thinking through them like mermaid, wizard, you know, things like that. All of those are the name are like what are on top of those fountains. Okay. So he had clearly decided that a fountain was a place to hide this thing. Uh -huh. so we, should go, we should we should go check it out. Yeah. Um, should we bring the doll? Should we no, just bring the, the doll? Ground. No, we should just leave it on the ground. We should just go check out that. Okay. Because we 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 kind of we kind of be her. She's down. She's down for the count for right now. Yeah, 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 and we lost out on the teachers. That's a good point. Yeah, let's hurry. Yeah, let's hurry. Do we trust Mandragora? Mandragora, can you watch over the doll? I mean, it's pretty much broken. I I can stamp on it a little bit more if you want. Just if you could of that situation, we're gonna go to the fountain. Sure. And she just walks over and she just steps on the head and just <laughs> brushes it. She's a big werewolf lady. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And you run over to the edge of the fountain. There is a flute-sized hole dug oh. in the dirt of the fountain um some of it was fresh dirt that appears to be the same sort of potting soil but there is also a lot of the dirt that is just dirt that was in the fountain it is a flute shaped hole that was dug and left open there is no flute inside mm -hmm. whoa, whoa. can we see any tracks around there maybe one-footed fairy tracks no, you you do not. Okay. Can we can uh, we can I investigate the area just to see if there's any other clues as to what happened with the flu? Um, sure. If you want to make an investigation check. Okay. I got seventeen. So this was definitely where the flute was. You see a almost perfect indentation of where it was pressed into the ground, presumably when they were packing, where when either Lou or Tiberius was packing the, the dirt back into the fountain. But it was recently dug up. You do see a little bit of dirt on the sort of lip of the fountain, but it has clearly been taken and taken recently. The, the dirt was recently broke. Um, within probably the past several hours. Okay. So yeah. They're right so at that tail. Yeah. Constance must have grabbed the she must have grabbed the flute and you know that's why she ran off. And then sent the sent the doll here just in case, you know, to cover her tracks and anybody looking into you know well, that where makes the sense. Flute was. And she's not at her room, otherwise Madrigora would have talked to her. So she must be back at her um her lot at the artifact uh, study group. Uh, but why would she? Why would be she running back there? Uh, they hide all sorts of stuff in their uh, in their private lots, right? It's like sort of a secret getaway for them. Why wouldn't she? Yeah, be back but there? To, hide, to hide things, I feel like that's a pretty obvious place for her to go if she's trying to hide something or get away with something. Okay, so what is this flute? I've only heard that it's a flute. What is this flute? Mandragora says coming back. Just like, what? Explain the flute. So okay. The, the flute yeah. is uh, a flute is the flute is a, a magical instrument that was found in a house and it was like brought over with other musical instruments that 
Tiberius and Logan were working on. Uh, the flute, um, what we found out is used to, was used by the Pied Piper, supposedly, to control rats. Um, but that's all that we've kind of gone on that. We know that, you know, it's from Fey origin. And... It's a bit weird. Like maybe you've seen it. it. Maybe it wouldn't look like a flute because it's not it's uh half it's not crystal, like a classical brass thing. It's like made of wood and of crystal at the same time. Okay. So it's a fey flute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fey there's flute. a there's um cool um Oh, and there's it, a rat insignia on it. Yeah, they, okay. there's markings on it. Which makes us believe that it's true that it's from the Pied Piper. Um, yeah. It's not gold, though, even though the, the Fae love to do arrows and swords and stuff out of gold. Um, do, do you know anything about the Fae? Oh, about Hex? I mean, your roommate's uh, Hex blood, right? yeah did she so, ever talk about uh where she came from or her family or any such things she did talk about wanting to move to the fey wild yeah a, a little bit um just getting tired of hex and hold and I, I, I wasn't sure how you'd get there there's not really many entrances here you you'd need some kind of Fey crossing to get there or powerful magic in order to get there like a plane shift spell so i'm gonna i look up into the sky and notice that you know the moon is starting to rise in the sky and i remember the moon gate and that sometimes you know the moon gate can hold some power more than just a decoration so possibly she might be heading to the moon gate to use it to run away. Wait. I've I think I've been to it's the one in the dark forest, right? Yeah, that's the one. I've been there several times. There's there's herbs around there. I I, I don't really go that often anymore. I can I you... think it was freshman year the last time I went there, but. Do you mind showing us where it is? Sure. I, I, I can take you there. Can we go, can we be a bit sneaky about it? I mean, we're supposed to be pulled up inside right now. Well, it's, it's kind of dark though now. It's getting late. Yeah. And frankly, if the artifact is as powerful as you all are saying it is, and she just has it. It might be a good idea to just screw the rules and run. We're Harry Pottering this shit. <laughs> yeah, you certainly are. human legends. Five points yeah. for <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's. We if she was here recently, there's a possibility that if we run fast enough, we can head her off. Um. So, yeah, I I know the way. Let's go. And she just books it down the path okay we obviously follow yeah. um it's probably half an hour of running across the campus down a path into the forest as you all are she is running full tilt she is definitely faster than you all because she is a werewolf um and, and the moon you, is full, right? So she would be... Almost full. Maybe two more days until it's perfectly full. But... Okay. Yeah, she is full tilt running down until you get to a sort of side path that she darts off onto. It's very clearly not traveled very much. This place is not um, well-maintained as she's batting branches out of her face and you all are as well, until you get to a clearing. It's a very mm -hmm. large clearing with a moon gate there. It is made of these almost flagstones that have been fitted together, this deep black 
um, that's in the center of this garden on this almost dais with some rough flagstone stairs leading up to it. And around it are all these flowers. They're, they're a sort of purple flower on a deep green leaf that is growing everywhere. And Mandragora comes to a stop and looks around. Yeah, this is the place. And she looks down as she... Old Spain, that's why I didn't come back here. And she collapses. And right. just starts coughing. Can I can I carry her away? Um, yeah, you can certainly try. You'd be moving at half speed, and I would need you to make a strength check. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, so just away from the um, what do you call it? Dias pedestal. Um Yeah, that she's she's not standing close to it. The I'm gonna say the garden is probably 120 feet across. Mm -hmm. Um with the moon gate being at the center. Um, and you all are probably 30 feet in, so it would be 30 feet to the dais. Um, and yeah, okay. give give me a, a strength check. Let's see how much that adds up to. That would be 15 in total. All right. So yep, you pick up her coughing body as you begin to drag her away from the edge of the garden. And Any you see, nope, this garden is filled to the brim with wolfsbane. You probably have to drag her out a significant distance before she'll start recovering. But as you are dragging her, you see Constance walk up and through the moon gate as she comes down the other side. And you watch as she kind of weaves her hands together and a cat's cradle appears on her hands out of this light sort of lavender string. And she twists her hands and there's a creak and a snap that you, Adam, hear in your ears as she's going to use Puppeteer's Lash on you. Okay. Does a 19 hit? Um, I need to do, no, I have an armor class of something, correct? Yes, she is uh, trying to hit your AC. Yeah, and it does. I'm at 18. All right. What kind of damage is it? It hits my so ear, so like my, I'm being... It my is, head. it's going to be psychic damage. Yeah. You're going to take 10 points of psychic damage. Okay. And you hear the creaking of strings as you are dragged forcibly 10 feet away from her as you leave Mandragora Constance? on the ground. 10 feet away from Constance or 10 feet away from Mandragora? 10 feet away from Mandragora. He's, Mandragora drops out of his arms as you watch. You actually see the sort of thin purple lines around your joints and strings that kind of come out, but they vanish into the air that yank you 10 feet away before they vanish. And Constance is holding her hands. I'm it's not going to have you fuck this up for me. You were saying? Is it 10 feet towards Constance? Like, did she mm. pull him? Or did she pull, like, it's like- She you know. sends him sideways. Okay. So it, she, the, he is the same feet, same amount of feet away from her. He, she just moved him away from um, Mandragora's body. And and I'm thirty feet away from her, or she's thirty feet away from. Um, I would Adam. say mm, you're probably near Mandragora, so you're around thirty feet away from her. And yeah, you do hear her say, you're not going to fuck this up for me. Okay. This? What are you doing? Getting out. What are you talking about getting out? What does this have to do with the flute? The Fae want the flute back. It's theirs. And they promised that if I gave the flute to them, they would take me to the Feywild. 
we're not trying to stop you from going to the Fey Wild. Which we're, we're trying to find out what happened to our buddy. Well, the Fey didn't want anyone to know about this, so obviously he took the flu. He had to die. And, and that's necessary it? casualties. Over all over the flu. Why do you want to get out so bad? Do you know how much power is knocking around in the Feywild? It is made of magic. I can join powerful covens and do powerful magic, far more powerful magic than I can here in this backwater shithole. Do they have a fencing team? Do they have a baseball team? Do oh, they I'm sure they, have... they do. I'm like, sure they do. They have nothing. You're insane. They're the Fey. They're incredibly powerful. So when I was told by some sources that that flute was magical and that Tiberius was onto something and that I should contact the Fey, that was my way out. Who told you to contact the Fey? The Candelabra Society. Of course, that note. Well, where's the flute? We're not letting you out of, we're not letting you get through that moon gate. She pulls out the flute and it is stunning. Beautiful mahogany wood burnished with a bit of gold over the, the sort of rats that are on this wooden section. It then morphs into this beautiful crystal end. It's probably about two feet long. The crystal sparkles with this iridescent energy. It is stunning. Well, if you want it, you're going to have to get it, and I'm not holding back. I need to leave. And I need everybody to roll initiative. Yeah. Oh, she did not roll well. I did, though. I did 15. Ooh, 15 for Goliath. Um, what's the initiative? So that is the order at which people go. So you're um, nine. No, you're three from the last battle. That was initiative order. So that's how we determine the, the, the turns. So that's going to be your dexterity modifier. So it would be the d20 plus your dexterity. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Come on, work. Work with me. I get a 17. All right. So... 17 for Goliath and 15 for Adam. So Goliath, you are going first. She is standing about 30 feet away from you on the stone steps, uh, having just dragged your friend away from Mandragora, your other newfound friend, clearly go about to fight to the death. What okay. would you like to do? Uh, um, I would. And does does attacking count as an action, or is uh, do I have separate attacks? Because I we have like the extra attack slot, but if I use an action slot, so your multi attack counts as one attack action. So the attack okay. action, usually the attack action is only one attack. But since you have the multi-attack feature, that means when you take the attack action, you do two attacks instead of one. So it's all one action. So your two okay. attacks are one action. Okay, I would like to cast hold person. Um. Mm -hmm. All right. You cast hold person. It does not work. As she is not a humanoid, she is a fae. Which oh, is not affected not by human. old person. So it would have worked on Mandragora. 
Mandragora. Oh, I thought this because she's a hex blood, and so hex bloods are considered fey. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and that's about that's like my action. So then I have movement, right? Yes, you have your movement and your bonus action if you have a bonus action. However, since you've cast a spell, you could only cast a cantrip as a bonus action, which I don't think you get as a paladin. I do not. So, and, and sorry, the slots, do they reset after every, you know? No, like they reset so like after a long, the, the spell slots reset after a long rest. So since you've used Thunderous Smite, yeah, that's you one, use it. Then... You don't get it back until long rest. So and then that's... you cast hold person. So you've used that one as well. Okay, but the hold person it didn't work, right? It didn't work, but you still but cast the spell. Okay. So even if you like miss, it still casts the spell. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take some of the damage. I'm gonna walk towards her. All I'm, right. Yeah. Like I'm gonna go up to her and and I can't like try to take the fluid out of her hand or anything, right? No, because that would require an action. An action. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try to try to tank a little and get in between myself and Adam. All right. So now, Adam, it's your turn. Okay. I try to yell to her that the Candelabra Society is a hoax. They're messing with you. Well, the Fae was real, so this is my only shot. You're deluded, I yell, as I um, run towards them. All right. And... My math says so that would put me around where you are, right, Goliath? Yeah. yeah. She didn't move you farther away. She just moved you sideways. So you're still 30 feet away from her, just 30 feet away from her in a different spot. What we on LinkedIn yeah. call a lateral move. Yes, it was literally a, a lateral move. She just wanted like you away moved, from Mandragora. He moved backwards, technically, pulling Mandragora backwards. Right? Or did well, he no. Side? So, like, Mandragore is here. Yeah. Constance is here. This is Adam. She moved him this way. Okay. So it's still it's still 30 feet from Constance both directions, but she just yeah. moved him this way. Good thing this isn't trigonometry, but... Um, yes, good thing yeah. this isn't trigonometry because I nearly failed trigonometry. <laughs> Um, I'm not. Yeah, so uh, I'm not close enough to attack. Am I? You are close enough to attack. You used your thirty feet to run up to her, and I mean, you okay. you do you do have a ranged option. Your your shield. Right. If you wanted but, to uh, attack her from your from your location, you could boomerang shield her. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm assuming you want to run up and stab her with the rapier. Yeah, I'm better at at the rapier. Um, at least I think. Um. So I'll um uh, I'll use that one. Um and attack and let's see if I can hit. Uh, I rolled nineteen. Yep, that hits. Awesome. So that means I get to roll damage. Mm hmm. Which were uh, it's a twelve. It adds up to 12. All right. And I have two attacks per action. Yes. So I go again. All right. Roll the hit. Mm hmm. Uh, that wasn't too hard. It adds up to 13. Uh, that does not hit. As you sweep by with your rapier again, she manages to. Step back and dodge. Uh, but you do get her once. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you would like to do with your turn? I think I did everything. And I even tried to confuse her with um, 
with the hoax thing. So um, I'm good because I can't really. I I did all actions, and I think ready an action or something would be it would use your action, and then right. it would use your reaction. Yeah, so I can't. So some yeah done. All right, it is now Constance's turn. And she is once again going to weave her hands and the puppet strings appear. And she is actually going to go for Adam first. Yeah. She only gets a 16. That's not enough for my AC. Yeah, you you can't quite see what is going on. But as the threads lash out and you feel them, you kind of shake them off and they snap. And she turns and she's going to go for Goliath. Uh, which she definitely misses uh, with only a 10. And once again, as she tries to shove you back, you manage to wiggle out and she isn't going to move. And so that is the end of her turn and we are back up to the top with Goliath. You are right there in melee range with her. Okay, so I want to... Cast Thunder Smite on my weapon. All right. Okay. And then I want to attack her with my javelin. But I'd also use, like to use... Okay, if I hit her, I want to use Strike of the Giants as well. Okay, on your on your trident? Are you using your oh, trident? My trident? Yeah, my Okay, trident. so it would be the Thunder of Smite and the Strike of the Giants. And the Strike of the Giants. And then I do have um, Divine Smite as well. Can I only use... Can I use all of them, or can I just use... Yeah, you can You can use all of them. Okay. If you have yeah, a spell slot available for to eat up uh, for Divine Smite. Um, it's it's not in my spells. It's in my my features. No, it takes a spell slot to use. Okay, and but that's so it, just that's just in the um the first level. You can use a second level one if you have a second level one available that you would like to use. Okay, no, I just have my um, I'll just use first level. Yeah, sorry, I'll just use two of my first levels. You're actually only going to use one. Well, you would have and then to use thunder, the second one. Oh, right the for the smite. thunder smite. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. okay. All right. So make your attack. This is going to be a ridiculous amount of damage, and I love it. I didn't hit her. What'd you roll? A one. Oh. Okay. Well, you have another attack, so she dodges your trident as. <laughs> Okay. It goes, and you can try again. Okay. <laughs> I got a three. <laughs> Much better. All right. Yeah. So she, you jab at her, and once again, she dodges out of the way. Your your thunder smite is still up, and you did because you didn't hit. You didn't spend that extra spell slot for the divine smite, right. nor did you use the strike of the giants. So those aren't going to take up any charges. You just missed your attacks. Okay. Um, so, Adam, it is your turn as she is going last. Okay. I'm going to try to uh, weaken her first with another stab with my rapier. Mm -hmm. I'm very uh, perfect form, everything. Get ready. Of course. Let's see. Um, there we go. This adds up to 22. That hits her. Right. And here we go with the damage, which eight. All right. So you kind of slice her side, mm -hmm. and you're going in for another rapier yeah. jab. No, I kind of want to. How is she looking? Um, barely hurt. Barely hurt. Okay. I barely will... hurt. She's a lot chunkier than her puppets. Right. So that means I'll go for her again with my um mm -hmm. with my sports rapier here. And 26 would hit. Yes. And then I would roll this one, which adds up to 
10. 10 points of damage Ooh. on Constance. Yep, that is a pretty good chunk of damage. Mm -hmm. And yet you swipe at her again and you manage to hit her as she tries to dodge out of the way, slicing her arm. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to do? Because that was my... I have two actions, right? Well, no, you have two attacks with your one action. Okay. So that means I ha I'm not able to... Yeah, so I'm pretty much done i don't see a reason to move you can, i in. mean you can you can move in between her and the moon gate maybe yes That's you, clever. you can you can move around her as long as you don't leave her threatened radius in which case she would be able to make an attack of opportunity um so you can just walk around her to try and block her from getting through the moon gate I will say there is nothing happening currently with the moon gate, but you are aware of okay. things could happen. And so I, I trust my roommate Gol Goliath. I'll take his uh, advice. Go yeah, behind. So you skirt around her and she's yep. kind of looking over her shoulder as she's trying to, you know, go between you two. So but, if that but, is the no, end it's not, of, it's not, no, it's no, not, no, 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 no. You still have things? I, I, I'm a fighter. That means I have action surge. You do have action day, surge. Which means I'll do it. I want to... We should uh, finish so her. two more rapier attacks. Right. So, we go again. Let's see. Here's the first one. Which adds up to 25. That would hit. That hits. Yep. And... 9 damage. All right. I go once more for this might not hit uh 16. That does not hit. You manage to she sweeps herself out of the way and as you do you slash a, a piece of her cloak um as she dodges nimbly. Um and is that that's everything it. for I your don't turn? Think I have any more tricks. All right. She is going to turn around to you, Adam, seeing as how you've been the one that's been damaging her the most. Mm -hmm. And she begins to whisper as once again she weaves her hands and more threads form. And the threads begin squeezing you. And I need you to make a... Let me check what this is as she casts this spell. A... Wisdom yeah. saving throw. Wisdom. Okay. Uh, that yeah, was... luckily for you, this is not intelligence. Luckily for me. Um, wisdom. Uh -huh. There we go. Oh, I got pretty lucky. Uh, 18. Just flat, 18. Awesome. You feel these threads squeezing you as if they're trying to shrink you down. Your head is filled, surprisingly, your empty head is filled with a fondness for tuna and belly rubs before you resist the effect and you hear the threads snap. She tried to polymorph you into a cat and has failed. And that is going to be the end of her turn. So we go back up to the top with Goliath. You've just watched her try and cast a spell on your on your roommate that has failed. Right. And you are right next to her. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna try again to um attack her with my trident, with my my with all your bonuses. Thunder trident, <laughs> yeah, with all my Yes, bonuses. with all the, your ridiculous abilities that stack yeah. conveniently. <laughs> Well, I did it for a reason when I made him. I was yeah. Like, oh, this, this big, and especially if I was throwing my javelin, that would be uh -huh. really cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna try to hit her, and I didn't get the first one. There's always a second one. I got it too. I got a sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Not With enough. That's Aren't you, don't you have plus 60. something? It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's at this base 16. So is there a modifier since I'm proficient with my trident? Or is that only for attack? 
No, that that is you're you're attacking. So that is yeah. your attack so, roll. So you got a sixteen on the die. Yeah, and then a three on the proficiency. So nineteen. Plus your strength, which I believe is plus two. Okay. Because that's the because you get a plus five on your trident. So if you got a sixteen yeah. plus five, that definitely hits. Okay. So yeah, it's gonna be trident damage plus okay. your thunderous smite, plus your strike of the giants, and then plus your divine smite. Okay. So that's gonna be a lot. So we'll take it one yeah. step at a time. Roll just up. the okay. trident damage. Okay. Um uh let's do that one sec. Um so seven is my trident damage. Awesome. Uh so let's go with Thunderous Smite next. Okay. Mm-hmm. So just give me the two d6 together. Just add those six. together. Six together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. No, and two, then... two of those, right? Yep. So yep. go again. So I, I, I guess got, you got... I got two threes. Two threes. Okay. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah. So let's do um, Strike of the Frost Giants next, which I believe you are the, the Frost variant of this. Yeah. So how much damage does that do? Well, um... Extra damage, one D6, cold damage. So you would roll a D6 and add that to... Yep, you just get the... Just roll me the D6 and tell me the number. Two. Only two? All right. Yep. All damage is good damage. And then your Divine Smite. So check what how much your Divine Smite does. Uh, it is... It says deal 2D8 extra radiant damage to the target, plus 1D8 for each spell level higher than um, first. So since you used a first level spell slot, it would only be 2d8. Okay. Only? Um, that's plenty. <laughs> Isn't it? I feel it's pretty good. It is pretty good. Yeah, and the two die together is eight. Is eight. Yeah. All right. Yes, you did quite a sizable chunk of damage to her as you hit her with this trident you hear the thunder erupt as this light shines out from the trident and frost forms across her body as she screams and brings up her hands to block. But it is unsuccessful as you have struck her. She dodged the first one only to get hit by the second one and it did massive damage to her. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your turn before we go to Adam? Mm, I would only be able to move or, hmm, I don't know, I think that she's, so Adam, the distance between Adam and Constance, like if, if I were to move in between them, would that cause her to have a reactive? You know, no. no, however, it, you are all within melee range of her. So it wouldn't really matter um, if I like, got in between them. So if you tried to get in between them, you would have to push Adam out of the way in order to get in between them because you all are standing like right up next to her. Okay, and has Adam been dealt any damage? Or is he a just bit. I, I've been dealt 10 damage. That was That's during the point. first sort of lashing that dragged him away from Mandragora. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. she has not been able to hit you and she has cast non-damaging spells. But I'm I'm doing pretty good. I have 42 points of health left. Okay. Okay. Um, no, then I'm done. All right. So, Adam, what would you like to do? It's your turn. Um, I, I actually do want to kind of, um, I, I don't need to kill her. However, we are using piercing weapons and such. I do want to subdue her, but I guess that also means just getting her to zero hit points without doing any fatal stuff. That is an option. Um, if you do try and like restrain her or whatever, you would have to fight against her as she would fight you. Also, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't just like pull out something and hit you with it. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I will say you can, if you drop her to zero hit points, you can say, I'm going to do that in a non-lethal way and she will drop to the ground stable. Yeah. But you would have to why, reduce her to zero hit points she... first. She's killed two people. Because I want uh, I want uh, them to close the investigation. Yeah, close it with your sword, girl. 
No, like okay. she should uh, confess. She already stuff. did. She confessed to us. Yeah, but the teachers don't trust us. Okay. Well, you could try what you want, but she killed two people, so I don't know how willing she is going to be to just roll over. I'm going to do my best. Do uh, it. But she's still looking pretty good, right? Yes, she is. Yeah, so that means I'll just go for the stab motion until she is ready to calm down, which means two attacks with the super rapier. Mm -hmm. um, first one goes here. 22 would hit. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. I keep asking because sometimes maybe she'd do a spell or something to be better, but... Right, but uh, she doesn't. She doesn't have those spells. <laughs> not, not, not right now, at least. Don't, don't uh, show your whole hand. Um, I that would be eleven damage. Eleven damage. Yeah. All right. We go again. Next hit. With nineteen, hit her. Yes, nineteen would hit her. Okay. Very good. And eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. All right. So she is starting to look a little hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and on her turn, she's still facing you. Right. And she is once again going to form the threads and try and shove you back as she uses another one of her puppeteer's lashes. And right, I sort of have the back against the wall of the... You do not have your back against a wall. You have your back to the opening of the moon gate. Uh, okay. And she dealt you a natural 20. Wow. Yes. So that means you're going to be taking 12 points of damage, 12 points of psychic damage, mm -hmm. plus an additional six points of psychic damage. Yes. And you are launched 10 feet away from her as she uses the threads to launch you. Mm -hmm. And she's going to do that again. Yeah. First, for, for um, if I only had a brain, what is, uh, so 12 plus what adds up to how much damage? So it would be 18 points. Eight. Because it was 12 Thank plus you. six. Yeah. Because um, of the, the way that we do criticals here. And she missed you with a second lashing um, mm -hmm. entirely. She rolled a six, so it would only be a 12. Uh, so you are now 10 feet away from her on the other side of the moon gate, like halfway down the stairs. Um, and you are now no longer in melee combat with her. But Goliath, you are. And we return to the top as you've just watched her shove your friend 10 feet away from her with her no. um, puppet strings. What would you like to do? I am looking. There was, I had an ability that cleared out my spell slots. Do you know what that was called? Cleared out your spell slots? It cleared it, cleared them out. Or, a, um, give you know. extra ones? You Not mean? give me extra one, but never mind. I guess I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, so I want to try to... How how are you doing on health, Adam? Uh, not too good. I am uh, I have 24 points left, which is half of my total. Okay. Um, and I have to touch him. Is, would Adam be considered a construct or undead since he's a scarecrow? Adam is, technically Adam is humanoid, just for healing purposes, but he is a Frankenstein's monster. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but he is considered humanoid for the purposes of healing. It's a somewhat reborn. Yes. Makes any difference. So, then I want to cast, um, I think, Prayer of the Healing. Check how much time that takes to cast, because I believe that's the one that <laughs> takes 10 minutes. I'm not going to stop you. Worth it. Totally worth it. Do it. But no, no. on the casting ten, time. 10-minute ten, ten real time? <laughs> um, 
10 minutes in game and a round takes six seconds, which means 10 rounds in a minute, which means you would need 60 rounds of combat to get off a prayer of healing. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying that's what you would be doing but for I'm the entire. I won't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I won't okay, stop so... you, but you can stop yourself. So, I can. Can I leave the melee combat? You can, but she would get an attack of opportunity as a reaction, just the same as if she decided to back up, which she isn't. Um, you but... would be able to use your reaction to attack her. But aren't you able to use an action to actively disengage? You can, but it would take up the action required to cast most healing spells. Yeah. Okay. So you can risk it, knowing that she has the power to move you. You can risk it. Okay, I'm gonna attack her again with my with my trusty trident here. And so I'm you not... would not have thundering smite on, but if you wish right. to add your other abilities, like if you want to use another strike of the frost giants or another divine smite, you can. I might just use divine smite because it doesn't look like divine smite takes a spell slot. It does take a spell slot. It does. Okay. Yes, it uses it at essentially. It, it's not a spell, but it uses oh, them no, as it fuel. Does. It does. It does say right there. Um, one d a as opposed to. I'll use divine smite so just in case I miss. That's what well, I'm it okay. it doesn't make you hit better, but you it only spends it on a hit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, okay. You know. So yeah, you're not going to um, waste it if you miss. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So. I'm going to uh the first one I got is twelve, right? Plus strength. It's strength. So I got a ten plus two. So no, plus it would be two, plus three. five because you're using your trident. Plus five plus three, so that's fifteen. That does not hit as not she hit. dodges out of the way as you <laughs> launch the trident at her. Okay. And then I got a 16. 16 also barely also misses six. as you swipe at her and she dodges out of the way. It says I'm proficient with this trident, but girl, I can't get one hit in. Well, I got one, but... You got dodging. a really good hit in. I did, but I, I want more than one. Very true. Um, okay, um, so I used my action and my attack mm -hmm. all i have is a bonus action and movement right yes which you you can use but she'll be able to get an attack of opportunity off yeah i'm just trying to get her to attack me and not you know my crippled friend over here um okay i'm done i think i'm done all right she is going to turn to you because you've just attacked her and your friend is 10 feet down the stairs. And she is also going to start doing the same whispering as she weaves her fingers together and you feel this the strings begin to tighten around you as you also have a hankering for tuna and belly rubs. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom. She's going to use her second polymorph spell. I got a natural 20. All right. So you push back against the spell and you hear the string snap as she just, damn it. And that is the end of her turn. So we are back up to the top with, um, actually, no. Yeah, I think you skipped Adam. I skipped Adam. Right, but I fell. So I figured. Nope. I, I skipped you. You You need to go. It's your turn okay. now. Okay, so I can do, I have a cool thing I can do, which is um, the boomerang a shield? second wind. Oh. I, I, I will do the shield too, but I need to heal okay. myself. If yes. I can't heal myself, how the hell am I going to heal anyone else? Right. It, well, you can't because you don't uh, have that ability. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm brainwashed by gay media. So of I course. can only... I have three things I'm able to say. What that's one of them. 
Um, I will do second wind. Yes. Uh, which is an action, correct? Um, does it say it's an action? I don't think it is. I think no, it's just it something doesn't. that you it, get. It's under it's under a bonus action. So it's just Oh, it's um a bonus action. I thought it was just something you could choose to do at the beginning of your turn. Okay. So that means it doesn't take up anything. I'll do it. Well, make I sure can't. it doesn't take up anything, because I'm fairly sure it doesn't take a It if takes it takes up a a bonus charge action. and a bonus. It takes up a bonus action. Oh, so you would okay. So you spend your bonus action, but that's fine. That's that's not the thing you use for attacks. Right? So right. And then Yeah. I get to roll a d20 and then plus six. So For your shield. for, for no for my healing, how much I Is it regain. a D? It's not a D20. It's like a It D8. is. It says like I don't know the rules. I just follow the rules that No, it it's says. one D ten plus six. It's a it's a D ten. D ten. That's not a D twenty. No. When it That's says ten ten, less. that means ten. Yeah, that is ac that's accurate. Um I just don't I was like, um I knew it wasn't. <laughs> Okay. Um D twenty is I have him right here. It's this one. I guess I don't know how to switch things in the app. Uh, that is six plus six. So So you get I'll twelve just hit points back. Yep. Uh, twelve heal. Good. And now I get to use the cool boomerang. I want to use it. awesome Uh, and it's because you we're pretty high level now for people at home paying attention. So that means we should have, throughout our studies, gotten a little bit of special equipment. mm And -hmm. I got this cool little shield. He comes back when I throw him. Right? yes So I can stay out of range and still mm do -hmm. damage. Sort of like a magician. Except, except strong and sexy. So um, I'll find out how it works. Um, I need to roll something and add proficiencies and such. So it's a bit difficult for me. Um, I don't play as If often. you if you equipped it, it should it should do the rolls for you, but it's, it's a strength. So it'd be Not strength, but proficiency, it's and d20. It's strength, an attack proficiency, roll. and d20. Okay, so I'll do that. It's an attack roll Um, as you just wang your shield at her, like Captain yeah. America. <laughs> Exactly. So that means I get a uh, um, seven plus my proficiency, which is three, right? So I got a ten to hit. Plus your That's strength. a plus my strength, which is four. So that's fourteen. Doesn't hit as you wang the No. shield at her. It No. bounces off the floor, flies, and then flies back to you as bang, you catch it again. But I am a fighter, which means I can go again. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's what I'm going to do. Nope. No. Oh, oh, that was a seven. Much better. So seven plus four plus three is um, 14. That's not good enough either. Still doesn't hit. As she is now paying attention to you, you wang this at her ankle and she lifts her foot as it bang and soars back and clang. You catch it again. And unless you have anything else, I think you only have movement speed left because you used your bonus action for second wind. Right. Um... I I will give the shield one more shot. Can I actually can I hide behind the pillar so she can't see me and can't do magic That to me? would be an action. So you you only have your movement speed left. You've used your action to attack her with the boomerang shield. You used your bonus action to heal Mm -hmm. with your second wind, and now you only have your movement speed. Oh, but I'm yeah I'm I guess um, in game terms I I wouldn't be using an action to hide. I would just use an action to be no. line of sight Okay, so you're move going to myself move up and just behind one of the flagstones? yeah All right, so you're not hiding, I mean it is hiding you have cover. There's a bit I have of a difference. cover 
Yes, okay. you have. You would have full cover if you hid because she's in front of the moon gate. You're hiding. Well, not really hiding, but because she can see you run up behind it. So you have full cover if she decides to whip around and do something. She would have to move to get you. But you can yeah, duck out. My buddy could do opportunity things. Yes. Right? Yes. If that's what she decided to do. But so that's the end of your turn. And we are back up with Goliath, which then afterwards will be Adam. And then Constance, and we'll be back in initiative order. So, Goliath, what would you like to do as you watch your friend chuck the shield at her at uh, Constance twice, and then run behind one of the flagstones? Um. Okay. So I would like to. Uh, let's see which one would be. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to do, I'm just going to attack again with my trident and do Divine Smite if I hit her. All right, for sure. Roll it. Um, I got uh, 25 on, or 24 on one, and then 13 on the other. So the 13 does not hit? That's but good. the 24 does. Okay. So I'm going to do my trident, which is a seven. I got All five right. Two piercing. And then Divine Smite is 2d8. Mm hmm. which is 14. So a total of 21. Wowza. Yeah, she is not looking too good Bitch. at this point. And so unless there's anything else you would like to do, it is now Adam's turn. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead, Adam. Yeah, because uh, I believe in this shield. I believe in America and I believe in justice. So I will... <laughs> Bro again. Wait, can I can I do something really fast? Or uh what is it that you want to do? Um, okay, so it says harness divine power, you can expend the use of your channel divinity to fill your spells. That's so, what it was that you were Yeah. So that's what I was thinking of. So when it says you can expend the use of your channel divinity, is that just like one of them or what does it mean? Because there's no there's like no slots for my channel divinity. I I think it would be under, I don't know what it would be under, features, it would be under features and traits. Um, well, that's what I meant. So like channel divinity, it says, it just says you gain two general channel divinity options. So I have those two options or I have the harness divine power. You can expend a use of your channel divinity to fill your spells. I think you only get one at this level as a paladin. Um, so once per long rest, I believe. I went too far. Um, do, 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 channel divinity. Yep, you must finish a short, oh, you must finish a short or a long rest before you can use your channel divinity again. So, um, so it'll just take, it'll take place of one of my, just the channel divinity options. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, never mind. I'll just leave it. All right. Just it's attack Adam. her regularly. It's Adam's turn, yeah. Oh, yes, it is Adam's turn. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to be cool and instead of be do technical stuff here to make the app actually work for me and make the boomerang shield into something that I'm wielding instead of wearing Um, so I can do the cool role of it. But I can't. So I'll just go ahead and uh, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step out from behind the pillar mm -hmm. line of sight and then do two rolls to see if I can hit her again because uh, I want to I wanna make this work. Uh, I'll try now. Here we go. That is seven plus three. That's ten. Not good enough. Nope. As you Bang, it hits the, the pillar and bounces back into your hand. 
but uh, it comes back because it wants to succeed. It needs yes. to succeed, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it will this time because now I'm at 22 plus 3. That would hit. Yes, that would. How uh -huh. did how did wait? How did you get a twenty two? Did you roll a natural twenty? I rolled in history here. I rolled an eighteen plus the four. Oh, for your oh, because your strength is a four. I forgot. It's ridiculously right. high. I'm super okay, strong. Yes. I, that's where I invested all my energy into. Yes. Um, okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's a twenty two. You do hit her. Right. And then I haven't been doing damage with this baby before. Uh, what should I roll for damage? Uh, uh, what does it say? I think it's like a D. I think it's the same as your rapier. It's a D6 plus your strength. Okay. I will check real quick. It is a D6 slashing damage. Plus nothing, yes. I guess. No, it, plus because strength it's a is... weapon attack, you get to add your strength to it. Okay. It would be different if it was like casting a spell out of it, in which case you wouldn't get the modifier, but because you're hitting her with a weapon attack, you would get your strength modifier. Very cool. Okay. Nice. Um, now I'm trying to make it turn into a D6. I don't know how to do that. So I'll use my real one. Um... Two plus four equals six. All right. Finally, the shield bounces off the flagstone uh -huh. and crack hits her in the rib as she screams out in pain and clang, you catch your shield again. And now it is Constance's turn and she is not very happy. She's going to whip around to you, Adam, and try and push you with her puppeteer's lash. Mm-hmm. She fails. She only gets uh, an 11. But then she's going to whip around to Goliath. And she also fails with a 15, which I don't believe hits you. So you once again feel the puppet strings trying to drag you away, but she fails both times. And that is the end of her turn, going back up to Goliath. She looks haggard. She's already holding her... She already has an arm... She's not holding her side, but she has an arm up against it where the shield hit. She looks haggard. So what would you like to do? Um, first, I'm like, you can stop this now. Give us the flute and everything will be fine. No. Okay. okay she knows what she wants. I'm leaving whether you like it or not. Okay, so I'm going to... Yeah, I'm gonna attack her with my um, javelin again, or not my javelin. Sorry, my my trident. Mm -hmm. And I am not gonna use any spells because my spell slots are um, used up right now. So I use my two die, and I hit her once. I got that. What rolls did you get? Um, I got a 23 and an 11. Yep, the 23 hits her. Roll yeah. damage. Okay. Um, I got a 7. 5 plus 2. You hit her with the trident, and she is sent to the ground with a sickening crumple as the flute pops out of her hand and rolls down the stairs into the grass. She is down for the count. And you are out of initiative. Okay. And at this point, you hear the barking of dogs, as you see Ismelda Thalassa dashing into the garden along with another man. You might have seen him before, you might haven't. Uh, he is Keenan Van Elk. He is the beast master who kind of teaches animal handling classes and things of that nature with a huge uh, sort of mastiff on a leash that is barking. And she turn and Ismelda just, what happened here? Well, 
It's it's sir. We we figured it out. Yeah, Constance Constance attacked us with a doll when we were at the greenhouse, and you know we decided to chase after her because we didn't want her to escape with the flute or into the moon gate. So we we stopped her here, and you know she started to attacking us. We tried to get her to to come peacefully, but she just wouldn't. All right. Well, this is certainly quite the mess. We are definitely going to take you in for interrogation. But. That's a rough word. We did everything. Interrogation? Are we under. I, I... What's up? No, you are not under suspicion. But if your stories do not line up with the evidence that we have thus far, you will be. You broke lockdown, as well as another student, she says, pointing to Mandragora. And she turns to Keenan. Message the others. Make sure that there's a nurse here. This is Wolfsbane. You broke quite a few rules. If... This pans out to be exactly what you say it is. You won't be punished. We will pretend that this little incident never happened. However, if not, you will be punished accordingly. As you Our have harmed... Attacked us. You have harmed two students. You have broke lockdown. We will perform our investigation... And we solved the murder. That's fine. We didn't do... Our stories are going to add up. So it doesn't... Let them do their questions. They're going to send this through it no matter what. Well, you're going to come with us. Now. Um, now. Okay. Sure. Um, but before we go... Girl helped us. Um, are you going to make sure she's okay? Yes. You watch as Keenan Van Elk, who has turned around, turns back and says, a nurse is on her way. We'll, I will pull her out of the garden. You take these students. Okay. Yeah. And um, since I, I, since I made the, since I made the last hit, I'm closest to the flute. I, good, good call. can I, can I slyly pick it up? Or, uh, or give me a sleight of hand text. check. Sleight of hand. Fourteen. Yeah, I'm going to say that's enough. As you make your way down the stairs, you kind of slyly pull the flute off the ground and are you just putting it in your bag in like a bag or in a pocket or something like that yeah, yeah. all right keeping it out of out of um just keeping it to myself but all adam right. notices me picking it up so he knows of course i do all right so as you all are being led away who was it that had the highest passive perception? I forget who it is. Was it Adam? Adam probably Adam me. Yeah, All three. right. You hear a sort of crackling sound from behind you. And as you turn, you watch as the moon gate. Something appears in the moon gate, a portal. And on the other side are is a beautiful meadow surrounded by beautiful oak trees something butterflies of some kind floating through the air and you watch as a, a tall elven man with golden skin and oak leaves for hair with a mask over his face made out of green cloth with green leaf-like armor turns you see the quiver on his back has golden arrows in it and he holds a golden bow. Turns before leaping through the portal and the portal closes. 
The rest of you do not see anything as you are headed out of the garden. Keenan Van Elk with Mandragora over his shoulder and Thalassa walking ahead of you, Goliath, as you kind of lumber behind her. And that is where we are going to end our tale as the mystery has been relatively solved. So thank you very much for joining us for our exciting mini series. And you'll be seeing more of our regular campaign, Red Dirt and Stardust soon, as well as hopefully more mysteries of Ravensburg Academy. So, so long and see you all later.